Good morning, folks. The sun had several gorgeous eruptive events in the corona over the last day. We're going to take a look at a paper that points back to the most basic electromagnetic geophysics and then see how that is applied globally. Let's start here with the last 24 hours on our star, and the majority of the Earth-facing side activity is top left as two filaments destabilize. Neither of these events produced a big flare, and they have not released plasma in Earth's direction. The sunspots are actually a bit less magnetically complex this morning. So, the focus indeed shifts to the remaining plasma filaments and their eruptive potential. Within about two weeks, the next 5.9 month cycle uptick should arrive, and we'll be reminded of what sunspot maximum is really supposed to look like. Let's go to the first paper of the day, an examination of how rapidly Birkeland currents change over time. It's quite astonishing, even over one satellite orbit, even over just a few minutes. The Birkeland currents are one of the main ways space weather interacts with the Earth, delivering a current in, current out plasma and electromagnetic particle energy exchange between geospace and the atmosphere. This occurs at the polar region, which makes high latitude an excellent starting block for studying the impacts of solar activity on the weather. This paper did exactly that. By studying Canadian severe storms, both summer rain events and winter snow events, they track their occurrence to be heavily influenced by the solar wind interaction with the Earth, with the auroral oval and precipitating particles from space as the driving mechanism, exciting the clouds, the atmosphere, etc. Now, veteran observers will remember that these kinds of correlations, solar wind and storms, aren't limited to the high latitude, so how does the rest of the world take that energetic input? Well, first, the solar wind inclement pressure condition works at the equator as well, a very direct injection that includes Van Allen belt particles. That high latitude auroral excitement also triggers equatorward traveling waves that run through the ionosphere and then work downward through the global electric circuit, the vertical energy exchange between the crust and the ionosphere. This paper is an excellent reminder of a critical aspect of solar forcing of the atmosphere, and when applied to the various ways the sun can inject that energy across the world, helps us more clearly understand those global processes. We greatly appreciate your support. Learn more with our resources listed below the video in the description box. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.